Well, good morning everyone and welcome to St. James Online. It's really great to welcome you to our service today. My name's Josh Maynard and I'm the Vicar of St. James and it's my joy to be able to lead us through our service today. Now, we have taken the decision, the PCC has taken the decision to uh, stop meeting in person and we're going to go online only and be sharing a bit more about this in a little bit, but we are seeking to put some other things in place um, to keep our worship fresh and uh, you know we want this to be a time of joy and moving forward not just a time where we're focusing on the fact that we're not able to meet in person you know God calls us doesn't he to meet together Jesus says himself where two or three are gathered in my name I will be there and I believe right now as we gather together we're more than two or three that as we gather together now uh, Jesus is amongst us he's with you and he's with me he's with me here in the church he's with you in your homes and so this morning as we gather for worship let's uh, make him our focus I love those words I quote them all the time don't I from Hebrews chapter 12 where the writer says let us fix our eyes on Jesus the author and perfecter of faith so this morning as we gather let's fix our eyes on Jesus as we come to worship let's fix our eyes on Jesus as we hear from God's word let's fix our eyes on Jesus now this morning we're going to be continuing our series on the fruit of the Spirit and I will be speaking to us in a little bit. Uh, before that though, I'm going to hand over to Joel who's going to lead us in a devotion as we go into our worship. And just before he does that, let's pray, shall we, as we gather together now to worship. Let's pray. Let's just have a moment of quiet. Let's still our hearts. Let's open our minds so that we can be renewed by him. Holy Spirit, we welcome you to come. So Lord, I just pray your blessing on us now as we gather to worship. Would you speak to us? Would you excite ourselves, our hearts, about who you are? Help us to give you an offering of praise this morning. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Over to you now, Joel. Good morning, I'm Joel, and I'm doing the discipleship here at St. James, and I just want to share a brief thought with you. Um, we all know what the gospel is and what the good news is. We all know about how we were dead in our sins and how uh, Jesus came to earth as God in the flesh, um, lived a sinless life, died on the cross for us so that we could be saved. This is the news that we all know, um, but I think sometimes we can fall into the trap of thinking that this good news is only for our friends and family to hear who don't know Jesus yet. But what I want to put to you this morning is that this good news is something that we need to meditate on and reflect on and hear time and time and time again in our walk with Christ. And there are a few reasons why I say that. Romans 1 uh, verse 16 says that the gospel is the power of God for salvation. So I think it's really important for us too. There's an amazing quote by um, Tim Keller, which says the gospel humbles us into the dust and at the very same time exalts us to the heavens. Now I really like that quote. Um, and I think it presents us a couple of reasons um, why the gospel is so important for us. And, and it's so important that we center our lives around it as well. Um, first of all, that um, it humbles us as it said in the quote. So, um, yeah, when the gospel reveals to us just where we were, just how dead in our sins um, we were before we came to Christ, um, it really exalts um, and gives God all the glory for what he has done in us. We are saved by grace alone, through faith alone, and not through any good works of our own. And to be reminded of that helps us guard against um, pride and self-righteousness, these destructive things that we need to kind of steer away from um, and our hearts um, need to be positioned so that um, we do not have um, pride um, about any accomplishments that we may have we may have had um, and yeah it just gives God the glory for all the work he has done. Um, secondly then it says um, the gospel exalts us to the heavens. I think um, a good way of thinking about this is how um, the gospel reminds us of how we've been completely set free, um, set free from sin, set free from um, all kinds of negative mindsets and difficulties that we may face. 
Also, in Romans 4, it talks about um, our faith being credited, credited to us as righteousness. Um, and yeah, I think there's this amazing uh, image of Christ's righteousness being given to us, even though we don't deserve it. Um, and this happens when we choose to follow him. Yeah, and we're also a new creation. And in that sense, we are completely united with Christ now. Um, and that is how the gospel exalts us to the heavens, I would say. Thirdly and finally, um, just another thought on why the gospel is so important for us. Um, the gospel provides us with an eternal hope. We have a hope of an eternal life to come and there is nothing on this earth that can strip that away from us. And to know that and to reflect on that is something that should give us strength um, and peace, even though we live in a really difficult world at the moment. Yeah, it's, it's fantastic news. And the more we reflect on it, the more grateful we are for the good news, the closer we will grow in our relationship with Christ. So, yeah, um, just as before we go into our time of worship, I thought it'd be great to make a declaration. Let's declare together a part of the Nicene Creed, um, which is going to appear on the screen now. And it's all about who Jesus is his life and, and what he did for us. So, we believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation he came down from heaven was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated, um, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. Right, as we go into our time of worship, let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for the gospel, for the good news. Thank you that you sent your son Jesus to die for us all. And I pray now as we come before you, um, that you will open our hearts um, and that yeah, your spirit will move. That, um, yeah, even though we're in our own homes, you will be so present with us and you will be ministering to our hearts and minds. I ask this in, in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Blessed be your name in the land that is plentiful.
So Lord, we crown you with many crowns. We declare your authority. We declare your power. We thank you that you are a great and awesome God. Lord, we bless your name. And Lord, we just want to thank you for your security. Thank you that you are the same yesterday, today and forever. And Lord Jesus, you are the rock on whom we can stand. And I pray that in these uncertain days, Lord, that our security would be in you. Lord, we just give ourselves to you now. We give you thanks. And Lord, we just want to pray for your blessing on our nation at this time. Lord, we recognise that we're in such challenging times. But Lord, we know that you're sovereign. And we pray for your blessing to be upon our nation. We pray for the government and all those in authority. We pray for the Prime Minister. We pray that as decisions need to be made, that you would give wisdom, that you would give clarity. Lord, we pray for the NHS at this time, Lord, for your wisdom, for your blessing, for your strength. Thank you for the way in which people are working tirelessly to treat people with COVID. We just pray, Lord, that you would bring alleviation in our hospitals. For all those who are working on the front lines, we pray, Lord, for your blessing and your peace. I pray for those in our church community who are working tirelessly on the front line. I pray, Lord, that you would come alongside them Give them your peace, give them your love, give them your strength, give them your energy, I pray right now. Lord, we just want to pray for your healing for our nation as well. We pray in Jesus' name that you would eradicate COVID-19 from this nation, from this world, that you would bring healing, both through supernatural and through scientific means. Lord, we do pray for those working on the vaccine. We, Lord, we thank you for the, that, the fact that it's being rolled out at the moment. We just pray, Lord, that again, you would help the logistics, that you'd bless all those involved in administering the vaccine. Lord, we just want to, we long, Lord, to be able to gather back together, not only as a church, but also just in our day-to-day -day lives. Lord, we're built for community. You've made us and wired us for relationship. We pray, Lord, that you would bring us back together. Lord, I pray for your blessing over us now as well as we continue in our service, Lord. Lord, our heart and desire is to be renewed, to be transformed, to encounter the living Lord Jesus Christ. And so, Lord, we just give the rest of our time together now. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Oh, well, it's so good to worship together, isn't it? I, and, you know, we've got to acknowledge that meeting online is not the same as meeting in person. As I just prayed, you know, we're made for community. We're made to be together and to enjoy each other's company. But, you know, this is what we have at the moment. And, you know, we can gather together online. Praise God for that. And let's make the most of that. And I just really encourage us to be able to express ourselves um, express what we're feeling, express our passions and our worship uh, in the online chat as well. I was hearing uh, over this week uh, how wonderfully at the end of uh, last service there was kind of a spontaneous welling up of prayer in the chat uh, at the end of the service, sort of 30 people gathering over the chat and writing prayers and we're going to give that a go again today and just see what the Spirit of God does with us in that. Also as a leadership team we're talking about prayer and how we can be praying for our nation at this time and praying for our church. So let's, let's be a people of prayer and don't just wait for me or others to, to initiate this. Let's just go for it. Let's pray for each other and pray for God's blessing. And if, <clears throat> if during the, uh, the talk or uh, over the course of worship or towards the end of the service, you just want to express something about what God's saying to you, please feel free just to drop uh, uh, an item in the chat. We'd love to read that and see that. Now, just a few things I want to make us aware of. Um, firstly, today, um, you know, we recognise the importance of community. You know, one of our values is loving relationships. And so after the service today, um, after about 10 minutes after the service, you can go and make a cup of tea. Or if you want to join in the online uh, prayer chat, that would be wonderful as well. And so about 10 minutes after the end of the service, we're going to gather together over Zoom. There will be a link that appears towards the end of the service. So you can click on that or you can go to the e-news where that link is. And that's just an opportunity for us to chat with each other, grab a cup of tea, warm yourself up. You're feeling a bit chilly. It's a bit chilly in our house at the moment. So um, we seem to be drinking lots of uh, 
cups of tea, especially uh, with the homeschooling as well. Uh, so, so do uh, come and join us in that and enjoy each other's company. Let's enjoy that sense of community together. Um, also, I just want to say that uh, we may be in lockdown and we may not be meeting uh, in person, but we're still the church and we're still wanting to move forwards. And uh, in a couple of weeks time on the 31st of uh, January, I'm going to be la launching our vision focus for 2021. And lots of prayer, reflection and discussion has gone into this. And I'm really excited about what God has got in store for us for 2021. So please do tune into that, uh, that service. Do come along, do let other people know. And let's be enthused by what God has got for us over this year. I really believe that the theme he's given us uh, ties in with our context at the moment. I think it's no coincidence that our Vision Sunday was planned for the end of this month. Uh, as we're in the midst of this third lockdown. So do join us on Vision Sunday. And also the leadership team is gonna be continue to reflect and think through how we as a church can uh, work through what it is to be the church uh, when we're so restricted to meet together. So um, let's keep working together. Let's keep growing together. Let's keep focused on Jesus. Let's be people of the kingdom. Now, at this point, I'm going to hand over to Julia Graham, who's going to give us our Bible reading. So over to you, Julia. Good morning, everybody. This morning's reading is taken from Job, chapter 1, beginning at verse 1 and ending at verse 21. In the land of Uz, there lived a man whose name was Job. This man was blameless and upright. He feared God and shunned evil. He had seven sons and three daughters, and he owned 7,000 sheep, 3,000 camels, 500 yoke of oxen, and 500 donkeys, and he had a large number of servants. He was the greatest man among all the people of the East. His sons used to take turns holding feasts in their homes, and they would invite their three sisters to eat and drink with them. When a period of feasting had run its course, Job would send and have them purified. Early in the morning, he would sacrifice a burnt offering for each of them, thinking, perhaps my children have sinned and cursed God in their hearts. This was Job's regular custom. Job's first test. One day the angels came to present themselves before the Lord, and Satan also came with them. The Lord said to Satan, Where have you come from? Satan answered the Lord, From roaming through the earth and going to and fro in it. Then the Lord said to Satan, Have you considered my servant Job? There is no one on earth like him. He is blameless and upright, a man who fears God and shuns evil. Does Job fear God for nothing? Satan replied. Have you not put a hedge around him and his household and everything he has? You have blessed the work of his hands so that his flocks and herds are spread throughout the land. But stretch out your hand and strike everything he has and he will surely curse you to your face. The Lord said to Satan, Very well then, everything he has is in your hands, but on the man himself do not lay a finger. Then Satan went out from the presence of the Lord. One day when Job's sons and daughters were feasting and drinking wine at the oldest brother's house, a messenger came to Job and said, the oxen were ploughing, and the donkeys were grazing nearby, and the Sabians attacked and carried them off. They put the servants to the sword, and I am the only one who has escaped to tell you. While he was still speaking, another messenger came and said, The fire of God fell from the sky and burned up the sheep and the servants, and I am the only one who has escaped to tell you. While he was still speaking, another messenger came and said, The Chaldeans formed three raiding parties and swept down on the camels and carried them off. 
They put the servants to the sword, and I am the only one who has escaped to tell you. While he was still speaking, yet another messenger came and said, Your sons and daughters were feasting and drinking wine at the oldest brother's house, when suddenly a mighty wind swept in from the desert and struck the four corners of the house. It collapsed on them, and they are dead, and I am the only one who has escaped to tell you. At this, Job got up and tore his robe and shaved his head. Then he fell to the ground in worship and said, Naked I came from my mother's womb, and naked I shall depart. The Lord gave, and the Lord has taken away. May the name of the Lord be praised. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, thank you, Julia. I uh, really appreciate you bringing us our reading today. Uh, I'm going to share with us now. So just before I do, I just want to pray for us. So let's just take a moment to still ourselves and let's open ourselves to what the Lord wants to bring to us this morning. Let's be open to his spirit and allow his word to transform us. Let's be still for a moment, then I'll pray for us. So Lord, we thank you for your word. And I pray now that as I speak to us, that you would take my words and make them yours, that you would speak through me and that for all of us, that we would hear what you're calling us to do. Lord, we long to be people who are led by you. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. So last week I started our series on the fruit of the Spirit. The title for this series is Elements. The fruit of the Spirit has nine elements to it. That's why we've called it Elements. And we are focusing on three of these elements at the moment. And we will be focusing on the other six elements over two series, one in the summer term and then one in the autumn term. Now, last week I talked about love, and love is the mother of all the elements of the fruit of the Spirit. And if you want to hear my message last week, please do go over to our website and you can listen to it there. Now, today I'm going to be talking about joy, and then next week Pete Mottershead will be speaking to us about peace. So today uh, we focus on this second element of the fruit of the Spirit, joy. And just a minute, I want to look at Job chapter 6 and verse 10. But first, let me tell you a story. It is about a uh, South African man named Martin who was normal in every way until he turned 12. At the age of 12, he contracted a strange illness that totally incapacitated him. He lost the ability to move and to speak. He had no ability to express himself in any way whatsoever except for the occasional involuntary head movement. The doctor's best guess was a form of meningitis. Martin was reduced to a persistent vegetative state. The doctors thought he would die, but he didn't. He was in that state for more than a decade. A specialist told his parents that he had zero intelligence and zero awareness. But Martin miraculously and mysteriously woke up, but he had no way of telling anybody that he had woken up, so no one knew. He was a prisoner inside his body. He was aware of everything, but he couldn't move his body. He couldn't speak, so Martin was dropped off at medical center day after day, week after week, month after month, for 13 and a half years. When he was force-fed scalding hot food, he couldn't tell them how much it hurt. When he needed help, he couldn't even cry. Perhaps worst of all, he was put in front of a television, set tuned to Barney and the Teletubbies. Martin has since confessed there are, there are few things that he hates more than the purple dinosaur. But he couldn't tell them to change the channel. Silent witness to the world around him, totally alone and totally powerless. In his book, Ghost Boy, Martin says, I completely 
I was completely in tune. But the only person who knew there was a boy in this useless shell of a body was God. And I had no idea why I felt his presence so strongly. He was with me as my mind knitted itself back together. He was as present to me as air, as constant as breathing, and he was the only person that I could talk to. Now, for some of you, you may feel like Martin, so alone, so scared, so bitter, so depressed. You feel like this man who called himself Ghost Boy. You may feel it looks like everything is going okay for everybody around you, and you feel like there is nobody else that can really identify with you. But I promise you that there is. There is not a person alive that doesn't have some shameful secret, that doesn't have some debilitating fear, that doesn't have some bitter memory that they cannot forget. Now the danger that as I share now, as I talk about joy, is that sometimes when you talk about something that someone hasn't experienced in a very long time, instead of helping them experience it, you make them feel even worse. And let me assure you, I certainly do not want to do that today. What I don't want to do is that if you are feeling that you are lacking in joy at the moment, to leave you feeling even worse. Today, as I talk about joy, I want to start at rock bottom. That brings me back to Martin. You see, everybody acted as if he didn't exist. Even his mum and dad, their little boy wasn't there anymore. Martin was a job for the nurses. Martin was a burden. But there was one nurse, a nurse named Verna, who was convinced that Martin was more aware than anybody thought. So one day, 13 and a half years after losing his ability to speak, Martin visited the Centre of Augmentative and Alternative Communication. Using infrared sensors that tracked eye movement, a doctor asked Martin to identify pictures on a screen. And he did it. Let me tell you what happened. Martin eventually learned to use a joystick to communicate. Yes, pun intended, a joystick. We're focusing on joy today. And we'll talk a bit more about that in a moment. Martin learned to use this joystick and a keyboard to communicate via a computerized voice. It has been a long uphill climb. Martin still has his profound challenges, but two years later, he got his first job and then he went to college and then he started a web design company and then he wrote a book. Oh, and one more thing, then he fell in love and got married. You know, folks, we are in an intensely challenging season. Some of us put on a brave face and say that others have got it worse, which they may do. But all of us are experiencing something of the challenge that this season brings. The intensity, the distance, the frustration, and much more. For some of you, you have been struggling for years and COVID has catalyzed your feelings of struggle. Well, with this backdrop, I want to read Job chapter 6 and verse 10. Now, before we read this, you need to remember that this comes in the context of all that has happened to the character, this Old Testament character in the Bible, Job. He has lost his wealth, his children have been killed, and he is suffering with boils and other physical ailments. In Job chapter 6 and verse 10, we read this. This is what Job says. Then I would still have this consolation, my joy in unrelenting pain, that I had not denied the words of the Holy One. Remarkable words. This verb for joy that Job uses here only appears once in the Hebrew Scriptures. So this is rare joy. It means triumphant elation, even in the face of staggering loss. It means to jump for joy. And I like this last definition. It means to leap like a horse, so stones spark. Can you envision a horse leaping so that sparks fly on the stones? What imagery? And the reason why this is so profound to me is it makes no sense. 
no sense whatsoever, not if you know what just happened to Job. He has just lost everything. He has been stripped of everything. He has been reduced to nothing. It is hard to imagine a circumstance that would be more difficult than what Job has just endured. He lost his family. He lost his wealth. He lost his health. All of it's gone. And then he wishes he'd never been born. Yet Job chooses joy. It's remarkable. Even in unrelenting pain, he chooses joy. We're talking about physical pain with no pain relief. I think it is the emotional pain that compounds it in such a profound way. He is burning with grief, yet he refuses to deny God or compromise his integrity. Let me give you a simple definition of joy. It is hard to comprehend this, but it's true. Joy is not getting what you want. Joy is appreciating what we have. Joy is not getting what we want. Joy is appreciating what we have. Sometimes what little we have, joy is about appreciating what that is. I believe that joy is a choice. Joy is something that you choose. Sometimes it's an easy choice at the end of an amazing day. Sometimes it is the easiest thing in the world to experience joy. But sometimes it is the hardest choice we make. I would suggest that it was the hardest choice that Job made on that day. Job chose joy in the midst of unrelenting pain and unimaginable loss. One way or the other, you can choose joy. You might be thinking, well, that's easy for you to say. Well, it's not easy for me to say every day. I promise you that. I could tell you about some of those days, but instead, let me tell you about Viktor Frankl. Frankl survived a Nazi concentration camp and wrote about his experiences. He wrote it in Man's Search for Meaning. Everything was taken away from him. He was stripped of his clothing, his pictures, his personal effects. They even took his name. He was reduced to a number. He was number 119104. Everything was taken away from him. But there was one thing they couldn't take away. Frankel put it this way, everything can be taken away from a man, but one thing, the last of human freedoms to choose one's attitude in any given set of circumstances. The most important choice you make every day is your attitude. Your internal attitudes are far more important than your external circumstances. And just like faith, I think joy is mind over matter. I'm not talking about a Jedi mind trick. It's not something we conjure up. This is about understanding that the Lord gives and the Lord takes away. It is all from God and it is all for God. And when you look at life uh, this way, everything becomes a gift. This brings me back to Martin. Let me tell you how Martin and Joanna fell in love. When Martin regained his ability to smile, which was quite an accomplishment, he did it all the time. He said that often his face would hurt from smiling. And that's what Joanna fell in love with. In the book, Martin recounts how he has just taken a bite of some caramel and is savouring it. And Joanna says, you look so happy. And Martin's response in his book is, Joanna told me that the pleasure I take in things is one of the greatest joys I give to her. And that brings us back to our definition. Joy is not about getting what you want. It is appreciating what you have. The Westminster Catechism, the very first point says this, the chief end of man is to glorify God and to enjoy him forever. I think often the more we have, the less we enjoy it. I think this has a lot to do with our measure of joy. We just think that it is getting what we want, but it's not. It is really enjoying the simple pleasures. There is a wonderful phrase in the scriptures, sacrifice of joy. You may be familiar with the phrase sacrifice of praise, 
but maybe not so with the phrase sacrifice of joy. Psalm 27 verse 6 says, Then my head will be exalted above the enemies who surround me. At his sacred tent I will sacrifice with shouts of joy. I will sing and make music to the Lord. Isn't that what Job was doing? He was bringing a sacrifice of joy to the Lord. It is when you find joy in the most difficult of circumstances. It is when you find joy not because of what God has done for you, but in your spite of your circumstances. It is when you hit rock bottom. Where do you land? Where do you go? One more verse for us. Psalm 30 verse 5. For his anger lasts only a moment, but his favour lasts a lifetime. Weeping may, may stay for an, the night, but rejoicing comes in the morning. At this point, I want to speak hope to those of you that have struggled and felt trapped. I know probably most of us have had a dark night of the soul over the last year. Perhaps many uh, over this season have really struggled. But when it becomes challenging is when that dark night turns into a dark week or a dark month or a dark year. Now I've gone through seasons where it just feels like there is a cloud hanging over me. You could call it an emotional slump. You just can't get it right. Something is just not quite right. But I wanna tell you that joy comes in the morning. This is the promise we're going to stand on today. We're going to believe that God's word is true. You may say at the end of a tough day, like sometimes you just need to go to sleep and you say the sun will come up tomorrow. But this is more than just a pithy little saying. God knew what he was doing. He knew there would be days when we had to call it a day and go to sleep so that we can start again the next day. His mercies are new every morning like a sunrise. This is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. Every morning is a little resurrection. Is that not true? God says, I'm going to bookend every day with two amazing miracles. Sunrise. Some mornings are going to be more spectacular than others. But if that isn't good enough, let's end it with this miracle called the sunset. And that is a reminder of the sunrise that is coming tomorrow. Now this photo I took many years ago on Travaux's head in North Cornwall. It reminds me that God watches over us. A new day and a new morning is coming. In this picture, the sunset reminds me that a new day is coming and the lighthouse that God watches over and protects me in the darkest times. I know that some of us are really struggling. It feels like sorrow is coming in the night. But I want to tell you, joy is coming in the morning. When you hit rock bottom, what I need to know is that my Redeemer lives. What I need to know is that God is still seated on the throne. What I need to know is that the best is yet to come. And I think I can say that with complete authority and the authority of Scripture, God has plans and a purpose for you. We are God's workmanship created in Christ Jesus to do good works, prepared for us in advance. He is ordering your footsteps. He is preparing good works in advance. No good thing will God withhold from those who walk uprightly before him. If God is for us, who can be against us? So let's stand on God's promises that when all seems lost, we can have the confidence that in fact not all is lost because we are found in Jesus Christ. I just want to invite us to pray now and I'm going to pray for us and I'm going to invite us to wait on the Lord and to give him our hearts. And you know, uh, there's days where, as I said, joy comes easily for me, but there are others where it's a real struggle and a challenge. And so I just want to encourage us to be people of joy, no matter what our circumstances. And I'm gonna invite us now just to wait on God. And I just wanna particularly say, if you're really struggling today, 
let's allow God to open our hearts. Uh, there's that wonderful scripture in Nehemiah that says the joy of the Lord is our strength. And so let's invite God's joy to come to us, to lift our hearts, to give us joy in him. Let's be still for a moment. Just want to invite the Holy Spirit to come. Holy Spirit, I invite you to come now into our homes, in the places that we inhabit now. Lord, would you fill our hearts with your joy, your joy, which is our strength. Let's just be still before him now. Let's invite his presence to come and to minister to us. Holy Spirit, I pray, come. Come and minister to us now. Reveal your love to us. And I pray for those places in our hearts at the moment where there may be uh, bitterness, there may be struggle, there may be depression, there may be anxiety, there may be all kinds of thoughts and struggles that we're going through. I pray, Lord, that you would help us to lift our eyes to you, to trust in you. Holy Spirit, come to us, lift us up, raise us up, give us a joy in you. Lord, we want to bless you and uh, just want to encourage us now as we go into this time of worship to, to lift up the name of the Lord, to praise him, to give him a sacrifice of praise. Lord, we want to bless your name now. We want to praise you and declare that you are good and that your love endures. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, let's, uh, let's worship the Lord. And uh, as I've said before, if you are struggling and you want someone to pray with you, do let us know. Someone would love to be praying with you. We can always set up a Zoom call and we can pray for you and we'd love to come alongside you. There's been times where I've struggled and uh, either met with someone and they've prayed for me or uh, in this season particularly met over Zoom or over a phone call just to pray, even if it's just a couple of sentences. It's a great way that we can minister to one another and encourage and build one another up. God bless you. Let's worship together. to hell. 
So Father, we want to bless your name. We want to declare your praises. We want to declare that you are a living hope. And Lord, it's in you we put our trust. And I pray that irrespective of the circumstances around us, that you would give us this attitude of joy. Lord, even when that may be really, really hard, I pray, Lord, that you'd help us to step into that spirit of joy. I thank you, Lord, that the scripture says that Uh, Father God, you rejoice over us with singing. I thank you right now that you are rejoicing over each one of us with singing. I thank you for your love over us. And I pray, Lord, that we could respond to the Father's love, that we could respond to your love with the spirit of joy. I pray on those amazing days we have that you would increase our joy. And I pray in those days that it's a real grind, it's really challenging that we're really struggling, maybe even over weeks and months where we experience that, Lord, that you would help us to have this spirit of joy. Thank you that it is part of the fruit of the Spirit. It's one of the elements of the fruit of the Spirit. Help us to live in this place, we pray. Lord, I pray for each one of us in all that we're doing over this coming week, Lord. Would you go before us and be with us? We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Uh, we're going to now close our service um, so I just want to say thank you so much for being here today and thank you to all those who've been involved in different ways whether that's in a public way or whether that's behind the scenes really appreciate everything that people are putting in to our online services God bless you in that and thank you to the rest of you for being here it's great to have you with us and as we continue to be church in this third lockdown and as we continue to be church uh, online Let's keep focusing our eyes on Jesus. Let's keep looking to him. Now, if you're new to the church, it's been great to have you with us today. And if you want to find out more, you can go to our website, www.stjam.es. It'd be great to hear from you. You can also uh, hit the contact button on your page now as well. 
and fill out the form to uh, make contact with us as well. Now, as I said earlier, we're going to make some space now for some prayer in the chat. So uh, there'll be some of us uh, remaining on, so feel free to join us. Uh, you don't have to necessarily write something. You can just be there in spirit and have a, a sense of prayerfulness as we're writing those prayers in the chat. Um, also, equally, if you've got something to pray, please do write it down. We'd love to see it. And this, in a sense, as we all contribute, it fuels our prayers and directs us uh, towards the Lord as we seek him. And we'll be doing that for about the next 10 minutes. And then after that, we'll open up the Zoom rooms so that we can share in community and uh, have some fun together. So do join us, join us in prayer, join us in community, and do join us next week. And don't forget the 31st of January, Vision Sunday. So God bless you, and we'll see you soon.